Hey guys, welcome back. Today things are going to go a little different. I'm going to be planting some, I guess, fall type veggies, some brassicas, things like that. However, while that's going on, my daughter is going to assault us with some FNAF or Five Nights of Freddy knowledge. We will see how that goes and hopefully no one falls asleep by the end. So just sit back, watch the planting, and enjoy the conversation. Just as a side note, the plants that I, I am putting in the soil after I'm mending it uh, with a couple of bags of I think just regular like garden soil from like Lowe's and I also put in I think either biotone or one of the tones that's good for the soil to, to prep it and get it back to a good baseline. Once I get that all mixed in I started planting some cabbages, some kale, some romaine lettuce, some Swiss chard, all those wonderful things that we can start back up again. I was hoping to do a video, but unfortunately we have a big I think, hurricane or tropical storm coming, so that doesn't look like it'll happen. Now, if we get any flooding, which it's highly expected we will, I'll try to get some footage of that so you can see this year has been just wet and rainy quite often so it's been kind of hard to get anything done in the garden not to mention I also uh, have a job <laughs> uh, that I do because this is just a hobby and I've been working a little bit more hours than usual so I've been pretty busy getting things done surgeries appointments and this is just something fun I like to do on the side but I hope you guys have fun wherever you are in the world and enjoy the assault of knowledge that's going to be laid upon you shortly. Thanks for watching, guys. See you in the next video.
So, because originally this was just me trying to talk about Gregory, because I was getting to Gregory, trying to ex eclipse. He's it's like his whole entire section. I love him. I love sun, moon. They're all great. Problem though, this whole entire showing of clips had nothing to do with the reason why Eclipse was important to the main story in the first place. And that was because B, B, he, Eclipse shows up in BB Balloon World Adventure, which is supposed to be, assumedly, the game in, that Gregory played that caused him to be possessed by Glitchtrap in the first place. So that's just fan service. Roxanne Wolf. That whole entire section was kind of just fan servicey in the first place. But it's interesting nonetheless, so you can give that a pass. But it just seems kind of weird for, to have that as a focus. Cool beans. We like Roxanne Wolf then. It gives us some insight into who Cassie is, I guess. And it's like, then we have a whole entire section, a, a, a portion of the game primarily dedicated to, uh, to Bonnie. But it doesn't really explain anything related to Bonnie. We have a lot of this stuff that just seems kind of fan servicey to see what happened after the thing and kind of feel good. Like you can literally repair Chica. It doesn't do anything, but but you can do that. It has extra game uh, game modes that weren't finished, such as the um, uh, last six holes of Monty Golf, and um, it has Chica's feeding frenzy in there. It's like they didn't. It was like they had mini games that were not finished in the main game. They literally have a section where it looks like you could have acquired Monty's legs. And there's a cage in the water diving section where, because they literally have two whole entire straight hallways, one that turns right it, where with the platforming area in the water section, which is kind of still feels do nothing because all of the animatronics are so dumb that the only way they can get to you is if they spawned on top of you or they spawned on, next to you when you were in a corner and therefore getting you stuck there. That's the only reason that you might die right, from those animatronics. It's like if you were not paying attention. If you are a new player, like first time, you might get scared and die. But after that, no, you're not going to, no, they're too stupid. You can leave a room and they immediately forget what you're doing. It's like they get. No. It's like. See, the thing is that people had some issues with the animatronics because the animatronics in Security Breach were kind of wonky in some ways. And it's like sometimes uh, they would glitch out a bit. They wouldn't follow the programming. But it wasn't like they were excessively difficult. Once you understood how they functioned, it was really easy to avoid them. You might not have been able to outrun the animatronics, but they were kind of stupid in the way that if you ran, if you could dodge them fairly easily. It's like, if you, as, and, and it wasn't in like a, it wasn't a problem of, it was very difficult to dodge them in the beginning, but once you get to the end of the game and you acquire either the flashlight, uh, not the flashlight, the, uh, the Fazer Blaster, or the most broken weapon in the game, the camera, because once you have the camera, mommy, these, the enemies are not enemies anymore. They're slight inconveniences. Because the thing is, the animatronics are difficult to avoid because there's nothing to stop them, to freeze them in place, at least in the beginning of the game. It's like, so what you have to do is you have to either sneak around them or distract them and then run around them. Once you're out of range and they can't see you for a few seconds, they'll forget where you were. And once you hide at a certain distance they'll probably as long as they you weren't in range a certain range that they won't remember where you hid it's like you're fine but that's a lot more difficult but once you get the phaser blaster now no matter what you can shoot at least two out of the three animatronics hunting you in the face right in his eyeballs that's like literally he he, he is no longer the a phaser blaster is just uh, a it's just um a laser gun like similar to like one of the ones you might get in like um because phaser blast is a game in the security breach in the pizza plex in a uh, which is basically laser tag except they changed the name so they could trademark it and copyright it and all the crap you know that's like fancy names and such 
because all cool things so all cool individually fazbear things need cool individually fazbear name so the fazer blaster is just a gun uh, like a laser gun it, it with a space theme theme that can blast lasers so it, it, it's kind of like it, they basically put um yeah it's just a laser on the end of a gun and that you would shoot typically at your enemies to in late in phaser blast at certain uh, so that they would be so you can play laser tag except it's also a capture the flag it's basically a combination of those two games now when it, in security breach after you go through um the main game after you go through certain areas of the game you hit the very end of the game and at the very end you get to choose one of the animatronics to destroy that is like to get one of the weapons that they have in their thing, which is in if you go to the area that will result in, it's like if you go to Phaser Blast, you'll get to, uh, yeah, if you go to Phaser Blast, you can get the Phaser that will all uh, the Phaser Blaster, which is just a gun with a laser on it that is all it is and you can shoot lasers at two of the main characters there so it's like that's one of the options the other option is going to monte gold and at, in multi Go monte gold you can acquire the camera the camera works very similarly except the phaser blaster sucks in comparison to the camera want to know why because the phaser blaster you have to aim it's literally a gun you can uh go into the settings and add a crosshair but you have to aim for your enemy's eyes so you need to be within range and you need to shoot them in the eyes for the animatronics so both chica and roxy and for any of the staff robots you have to aim for their eyeball or at least their face if you can get close to, enough to their face near the eye section it'll count as you shot them in the in the eyes and then they'll have a whole entire stunned animation where they'll just kind of have an aneurysm so that's like the whole entire thing now the now the camera, that the Faz camera, as um, it's like that's slightly different. Why? Because it's just a camera. It's not a laser gun you have to point and aim and shoot. It is a camera with a flash on it. The whole entire point of the camera is that it was uh, uh, often used, uh, uh, it confiscated in Montegal because the camera's flash, flash can mess with the animatronic uh with the robots the animatronics systems it because it, it it's basically a blinding white flash to their eyes it sends their systems in a in a fritz for a second so it that's and the difference between the phaser blast and the camera is that the camera you don't have to aim as long as you're in the general direction of the enemies you now can permanent uh can completely he uh dis uh engage them for stun them for like two to five seconds i think he, they'll stop in their or in the tracks and just pause for a second because and because they've been flashed they've been stunned and so once you get those animatronics are piece of cake and if you get monty first even better because once you get monty first he becomes even less of a threat which is funny because usually throughout a game you want your care your game in characters to become more of a threat but it's kind of the opposite for monty for um for chica she loses her voice box this causes chica to become a lot quieter so in some aspects so it makes sense for why chica gets slightly harder she starts making screeching sounds and she's a little quieter in, in some aspects because um uh roxy she's now blind now so all she does is go for blind rage she just goes in straight lines but now she's slightly kind of faster seeing uh faster when she dashes at people because she goes into just blind straight rant uh, uh attacks but because she's blind she's got a disadvantage now but you can't really stun her because she can't see so it, roxy's just about the same mm -hmm. so roxy's just about the same and it's like, uh, but she does hear you, and that's like a heavy thing that her focus is now hearing, which isn't exactly shown in her 
gameplay sometimes, but it's it's close enough. Because a lot of the time, especially at the end part of the game, she just seems like she knows where you are, despite the fact that she's supposed to be blind. And then lastly, we have Monty. Monty is ultimately the most destroyed out of all of them, because Monty's whole thing is that Chica has her uh, was already pretty quiet. In, in the general, that was her thing. She was very quiet, could sneak up on you if you weren't paying attention. But otherwise, she was generally pretty slow, so she wasn't exactly the best. She couldn't jump at you or anything. She was just generally slower. She's like easy mode. Roxy, Roxy uh, was slightly, more be uh, slightly better than Sheikha because she had a dash. She could jump at you if she wanted to. She, had, it, she could wind up and launch at you, and that was like her thing. Monty is just built different in that Monty, his whole thing is originally the thing you were supposed to collect from him were his legs because Monty could jump. That was a thing for him. He could jump really high. Um, uh, they eventually changed that to be Monty's claws. But yeah, his whole thing was he, he could jump really high. And so oh, um, Monty can jump. High. He also has a dash that is in tandem with his jump, so he can jump vertically up levels in the game, like up stairs and such, and he can jump, uh, uh, do a dash so much Roxy, and he has sunglasses, so you cannot stun him with the camera or the laser gun because he has glasses in his face that prevent you from stunning him. So yeah, he has a bit of an advantage than the other animatronics, because you literally cannot stun him. Thankfully, in most sections of the game, he's not an active problem. But after his whole breaking, he loses his sunglasses, and he loses his legs, which were the two things that made Monty difficult. The two things was that Monty could jump really high and, and jump straight at you, so you could be on the second floor and Monty could jump up the stairs to you. Or, and then there's number two, which was that he could see, he had glasses that prevented you from stunning him. But after the whole old glasses affair, he can now be stunned because he's not wearing glasses anymore. So that's a thing. Let's see. For a security breach? For all, the whole, for each uh, character, you can destroy them and acquire an item from them that will help you explore the pizza plex bigger, uh, farther. Chica has her voice box, and in the game's lore, it said that when they were upgrading her voice box, whatever happened when they were pr making it caused it to have an error where it was at a frequency that was disrupting other tech uh, devices in the game. It would it would stun other animatronics in the area, like staff bots and such, and it was just not good. So they, pr afterwards, they put a warning that Chica would no longer be allowed to sing until oh, the, uh, her voice box was fixed because of how oh, it negatively affected de uh, devices in the area. And so using her voice box, you can unlock certain uh, lo uh, electrically locked uh, gates. So some gates are locked with an electric lock at the top and if you use chica's voice box you can open it and as well as stunning animatronics though it's not very often used seeing as most of the time you're not really in freddy to use that especially since freddy has very short battery then you have roxy roxy's eyes can see through walls though it's not actively used in the game game as like something that roxy can do she can see through walls and because of this as when we uh, you acquire it, it's helpful to see where different items are that you might not have collected. Because in Security Breach, you can collect uh, two types of items, which are bags that usually have some sort of, some sort of message, usually an inter online message, but they usually have that, or present boxes that usually have items. Sometimes that being like important game items or just ga uh, collectibles that will help you reach a certain ending. So Roxy's eyes are just a cheat code for now. You can see through walls, which helps you uh, get through certain places. 
Additionally, Roxy's eyes is how you get to a certain end game. So you need to collect Roxy's eyes to get to a certain end of the game. Yeah. That's just, that's like the one thing you have to do. I don't think you can go to, yeah, I don't think you can go to the end of the game without collecting, Ro collecting Roxy's eyes. At least story-wise. Because you can glitch through the game. But yeah, I'm pretty sure Roxy's eyes is a mandatory collect for the end game. Then you have Monty's claws. Monty's claws um, are used for gates. Certain gates are not locked electrically. They don't have an electric lock. They have chains on them. And Monty's claws, the whole entire thing, advertisement for it, is that you can open, that Monty's claws are sharper for bass playing, and therefore you can open chain doors. But yeah, that's like the whole entire thing for those characters. But I was getting sidetracked. So for Ruin, a good percent of it is just a lot of fan service stuff. It doesn't seem like anything lore important, uh, like lore-wise for the continuation of the series. Like what's happening with Burn Trap, Mimic, The Blob, Fazbear Entertainment, Glitch Trap, all the stuff. Ah, each of the games are all FNAF games, but they're not, they each have individual names. FNAF 1 is just Five Nights at Freddy's 1. FNAF 2 is Five Nights at Freddy's 2. FNAF 3 is Five Nights at Freddy's 3. And FNAF 4 is Five Nights at Freddy's 4. Then after that, you have FNAF World, which was kind of a set aside mini game. It had some, it has some more relevance, though so, oh, people rarely ha have trouble finding out what that might be, saying as over time the story's changed a bit, so it's difficult to kind of place if any of it actually works anymore in the story. So then you have FNAF 5, or Five Nights at Freddy's Sister Location. That was the first name chase, where they actually gave the game its individual title instead of just numbering it. That was fun. It's like a sister location. It kind of marked a change in the game story anyway, past uh, FNAF 4. Uh, then you have FNAF 6, which is Five Nights at Freddy's Pizza Sim, or Pizzeria Simulator as its full entire name. From there, you have technically Ultimate Custom Night, which is a game in and of itself. It's, it doesn't have like knights or anything similar to other games. It's more of a you can find lore clues in different aspects of the game. From there, you have the next game, which was Help Wanted, Five Nights at Freddy's Help Wanted. It was a beer or a game. And then after that, yeah, the VR game. Yeah, I, the VR game was kind of helpful because it kind of condensed all of the different games that previously in a different format. And it was a good introduction point for a lot of the newer games. Some people had some, their complaints because it's a VR game, so it's not as accessible. Change? No, 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 no. I'm not going to get into that. So, Ruin, I didn't like it. It's just as simple as that. I didn't like it. It just felt off. A big, it was like the one I was talking about recently, right now, was how uh, they didn't really choose a path of lore. It was like if they were going, it was like there's two ways they can do most people go with DLC games. With DLCs, they'll go either like just happy, fun time stuff, extra stuff, just extras. Sometimes those are mini games. Uh, sometimes they're, they're a whole entire story, additional storyline that's not canon and not related to the game. And it's just kind of for fun. Or, sometimes they'll make it heavy in lore, they'll, and it'll be more like a continuation of the, of the actual base game. Ruin is kind of a both, because despite the fact that this is a continuation of what happened in Security Breach, a good percent of Ruin is spent doing nothing that has anything related to do, has literally nothing to do with what happened in Security Breach. Or anything in the main storyline. Like, the whole entire beginning of the game, up until you get to the uh, Mimic's tunnel, or his lair, or where you find MXES and all that, that's about it. MXES is like the only thing that might have some lore relevance throughout the beginning of the game. I don't even want to know how the Mimic got a radio all the way up to the first floor of the building and then just decided to just go back to his little cave. But that's whatever. 
doesn't matter. I'm gonna ignore that plot hole because who gives a crap? Um, we're just gonna pretend that that could just be there when there's literally 99% of the merch in that building has been removed or been completely destroyed. And yet a completely fine Faz uh, uh, Bear Entertainment uh, walkie talkie, the second part, the B part, is just up on the first floor. And, and the first part, part A, was just for some reason locked down in the basement in a hole with nothing except that one pristine, completely working radio that apparently the batteries still work after possibly seven and months of being down there because clearly the mimic just turned it on recently after contacting cassie somehow because but ignoring all of that fancy doodah stuff we have um let's see so like the whole entire section for Eclipse feels like it's dedicated fan service. Eclipse does have lore relevance, but his lore relevance has nothing to do with his animatronic at the current moment, and everything to do with uh, BB's Balloon World, old uh, BB's Balloon World adventure. And yet they don't ever involve that, despite showing Eclipse. They never mention that part of the game at all. So it's like despite that fact, that's it's like Sun and Moon's only actual lore relevance to like the main story of the game related to glitch trap because people because bb's balloon world adventure is supposed to be how gregory was possessed by glitch trap then we have uh the mini games they completed the mini games that were unfinished in the game we have chica's food frenzy we have um monty's uh monty golf poles the last six that were unfinished in the original game those were all finished products that are uh, the finishing of those last mini games that went unfinished and put into the DLC. Okay, those are extra things. They don't. So it's like you even get to fix Chica. It doesn't have any actual relevance to what happens in the story, but you can fix her. Or if you beat Chiki, uh, if you beat Chica's uh, feeding frenzy, you'll get her her voice box, and you can put it in Chica and fix her. So clearly, this is like has a lot of fan servicey aspects. Since none of that actually is relevant to the story, so it's like, heck, there's even an uh, area that looks like it might have once been dedicated to fixing Monty. Seeing as during the Monty area, where Mon uh, the Monty fight, I say with, hype, uh, with um, quotation marks, because it's literally just a hallway, and Monty's too stupid to follow you down the hallway half the time, you can literally get across the whole entire hall with Monty nowhere behind you because of how easy it is, because of how dumb all the animatronics are in the game. And the whole entire thing, there's a, a section where if you go right, there's platforms that lead to what looks like a little cage. That It looks like this could have been where if you had at some point collected Monty's legs, this looks like you could have possibly he trapped Monty instead of killing him later in, in the thing. This looked, it looked like this is where you would like lead Monty into the cage or something. And then maybe repair him. Maybe. Either way, doesn't see the light of day, so it doesn't matter. It's just now a weird hall that goes right when the very clear answer is go forward. And it, so it just well, kind of looks up, weird. Like so there's all of these... It's all of the stuff that look makes it very fan servicey. It feels like just for the fans who really like these characters. It just seems like fun added on stuff. And then all of of a sudden, at the end of this DLC, we just get lore. It's like that's actually relevant ish because I don't see how the mimic matters at all in the grand scheme of things. But for like story wise, it matters somewhat, seeing as this means at least something. The books say for once actually matters and from that it's like and at no point during this whole entire game has the mimic ever been like hinted at during the whole entire ruin dlc like yes we are it's like for, it, it sure we all kind of knew that gregory was not under there he was either dead if it was from one of the death endings he was either escaped long escaped or there was only one ending that he could have possibly been stuck under there. 
one possible ending. And so most likely people are like, yeah, nine times out of ten, Gregory's dead or long gone. He's not in this. So everyone knew that wasn't Gregory that was calling for Cassie's help. Because the whole entire plot of Ruin is that it's been months, most likely, at least a one to two plus months since the mega pizza plex burned down. Well, collapsed, technically. The whole entire point of the Ruin DLC is that Cassie is looking for her friend Gregory, who was the main character in the first game, Security Breach. Uh, the whole point is, is the whole point to find all the dead things that we have, like, like the kids and... No, there is. Okay. Yeah. Okay. For which game? So there's different ones for each game. Yeah, each game has oh, a different ending. Oh. First games, uh, one, two, and three, you're secure.